All right, everybody, here I am at Manda Tanko. It's a very special place for me, inspirational place, and it's where I realized that um, photography is a very, very powerful medium. And it's uh, pretty much from this location, after all the photography that I did, where I realized that photography is what I really want to want to do. Forget about the drawing and the painting. This is just it's just way more challenging for you. I mean, it's really hot and humid. When I first started photographing here, this mine was abandoned. Shoulder high weeds. Eventually, I, I made my way inside um, by climbing over this here. Actually here. And then I'd, I had to scramble through weeds and there were snakes and everything it was pretty disgusting. But eventually the city gave me a key and I could come and go as I please. And to this day I still have the key. Don't tell anybody. This mine's been designated as a World Heritage Site. What I want to do is I just want to be able to wander around um, and just kind of reminisce about spots that I took photographs at. I remember taking a photograph from this location through this fence. And it was around this time, this time of year, in the summer of 2001. And it was earlier in the morning. And this tree right here was absolutely loaded with uh, semi or cicada. It was deafening. Anyways, I had my 8x10 here set up. And I took a picture through the fence and the barbed wire. And I remember I had a depth of field issue, but I think I managed to succeed. And I got a really good photograph. And I believe that was on HP5 film. Let's go inside. So you can see there's a lot of renovating going on and I probably won't be able to go over there, which is a pity. Okay, so this is a shrine here and uh, I've have, I did take a few photographs from here. At that time it was just tons of weeds and spider webs, which I found extremely appealing. But this shrine, this is where all the miners would come and pray to the god of the mountain before they would go down into the pits. This is the office building, administrative building. I believe there's also um, change rooms were down in there as well, or locker rooms. Um, I've been inside, but I haven't really taken much, done much photography. I took one picture outside here, but I wasn't absolutely really thrilled about it. I remember there was a big tree growing here. over here. I always like this little track here. It's kind of how I could find my way around when the weeds were high. Repair shop, workshop. It's cleaned up. Blacksmith. Well, like I mentioned earlier, this place was really important to me for my photography. Not only that, it was like almost like a haven of rest because I had a key and I could come and go as I please. There was no one here. We could just go through that gate, we went through, lock it and just wander around and get lost, take lots of photographs. I 
definitely took a picture of this on the 8x10. One that I really like with, with the 120 lens on the 8x10, where it came in at sort of an angle. You know, something like this. The first time I came in to the mine, I went inside this building, inside this room, and I was pretty much blown away with what I saw. It's almost like the workers just got up and left, because teacups were sitting, the teapot, there was still a bit of like, minky, moldy looking tea in the teapot. Clock on the wall, it stopped at a particular time. I believe I took a picture of the clock. It was just really dark in there, so I really couldn't do much, but I was able to take a picture of the clock. That's about all the photography that I did. And that was on the very first day that I came inside the mine. I worked up enough courage to sneak in. It's hot and it is humid. Wow. I'm gonna go over there. I just noticed something that I photographed too. It might have been on day one too. Of course back in those days I only had two holders so four sheets of film so I had to be really selective. But I knew I'd be back. And I was back almost every day. Looks like we can't go over there, unfortunately. But we can see from here the toilet. I take, took a photograph from inside there on 8x10 with uh, the 120 lens, I believe it was. Yes, extreme wide angle on 8x10. And it's, it's a photograph that I really like. And I included it in the shows that I had afterwards. I think three shows, exhibits that I had. And it, it sold. I actually bought it. Sorry, I can't get any closer with this little thing. That cart leaning against the wall used to be. Where did it used to be? It used to be laying down somewhere in the tall grass, somewhere in there, I think. And I've taken a photograph of it, and there was there was an arrangement of flowers growing around it. And uh, I actually really like that one, that one, the print I made of that one. That one went in the show too. I think that was around in this area here. Unfortunately, I won't be able to get in over there, as you can see, we're doing some work on it. Um, but I'll tell you about a photograph that I took from at the end of this pond in the evening. So I wanted to take a photograph of the tower, Yagura in Japanese. Um, can we see the top of it? Um, I want to take a shot at night. So I came here around 6 o'clock and I got my camera set up and framed it and when it got dark enough, and that's a little bit of a joke in Japan, it doesn't, the skies in the city don't really get that dark because of all the light pollution. So I, it was as dark as it was going to get. So at that time, I opened up the shutter and uh, walked around and I had a strobe for my Canon that I activated a few times to do a little light painting on really dark areas. 
I even walked underneath, climbed up and underneath the, the tower. And hit that with a few blasts. And uh, to get decent star trails, I, wanted to, I needed to leave the shutter open for a considerable amount of time. And I didn't really want to hang around. At night, it's kind of creepy with creepy sounds, so I just left my camera there, the shutter open, and I got in my car and drove to Starbucks and sat in there for a few hours. Then I came back and closed the shutter. That resulted in one of my favorite images that I call Stars Over Munda. Another neat thing about I was look at really, really carefully at the negative. You can see, you can see the star trails clearly. Not very many of them, <clears throat> but there was one that kind of went uh, in a straight line. So what the heck is that? And then I realized that um, Omuta Airport is not that far from here. So it was uh, just a plane coming in and turning landing lights on. So it recorded on the film, but I burned the sky in so much, so you can't really can't really see it unless you look really close. Let's carry on. Oh, it's a real shame we can't get in there. That little hallway there leads to uh, where you can get on that little tunnel that leads to the elevator. Also, there uh, is the bat bathing area, and I've taken photographs in there. I have taken photographs down that hallway. side room there's there's like a shaft where they would hang hoses and I took a photograph there of a jackhammer and some leaning against the wall and uh, some old rubber work gloves that's one of my favorites too shot that one on 8x10 a another room a tool shop or a workshop or whatever and I took a photograph of uh, an old drill press and that was really neat in there the light was very special of this the office building uh, there's a huge or there was a huge aloe vera plant growing and uh, my son loved that so he would pick off a little piece and rub it on his hand and we had to take home for mommy so I'd like to see if that is still there but I can't get around there unfortunately Bulgar. Number 18. This little tunnel I went in on day one. Walked about halfway in, turned around, and I thought, wow, I've got to take a picture of the track. And there was a shovel laying on the track. I took a picture of that. And I had a bit of an incident because when I had the camera pointed down, and I was focusing, all of a sudden there was a flash of light. And I'm going, what the hell? I looked down and my 120 lens had fallen off. I didn't attach it properly. It had fallen off onto the ground and a little chip on the front element, but on the side. But luckily, it had no effect on images that I could tell anyway. I still have the lens and I still use it to this day.
entrance over there. Can't really see it. And there's the gate there, the steel gate that's actually very, very similar to this one. And I took a picture of, um, I was really attracted. It was really, really wet. There's a lot of water. Um, <clears throat> so I shot it on some on 8x10. At that time, I was using mainly HP5 in 8x10. And same with uh, 4x5, but I was also shooting a lot of infrared and uh, FP4, I believe. I think that's about all I was shooting on large format then. Yeah, it's a real shame doing the renovating now. Anyways, I'm taking you to the spot where I took my very last photograph of Mundico Mine. It's tower and iconic brick building and I took it, I don't know, from about here. Weeds were a lot taller then. I don't know, I, I think I appreciated the Yaguda, the tower, more when it was all, paint was all peeling and it was rusty. And now it's all pretty pristine. I guess that's what you gotta do to preserve it, keep it going for even more generations to enjoy. So it was, it was early evening, I was about here, somewhere around here. Set up the 8x10 and had some beautiful clouds and took a shot and uh, I included it in some of my exhibitions after that. These are that's what's left of the, uh, the other towers. I'm not allowed to go over there. This is about as close as I can get. Walking through grass usually means mosquitoes. But I did take a picture of the side of that one, 135mm. I think that was about 2005. And I was back for an uh, exhibit, a showing of my work I had. I can't believe I was here with an 8x10 camera almost on a daily basis photographing in this heat and humidity. able to get inside one of the main buildings and it's the first time I've been in here since 2002. And I, I did quite a bit of photography in here and there's a few that really stand out for me. I got one of this bell, lift bell I think I call it the print. And the streets are still there. the underside this winch and 4x5 and put one here through here and through here I love this one. There's a bit of a depth of field issue, but I think I got it with a little bit of uh, front swing. And uh, I think this one was on 4x5. 
for a long exposure. I can't remember how many minutes before that's supposed to be factored in, and I believe that was on HP5. The winch for the uh, elevator up and down. <clears throat> I took a picture of that on 8x10. And uh, I really liked it. I really liked how the wrenches were all arranged. Looks like they're still arranged the same way. I'm sorry I can't get over there and show you. But, um, I made an 8x10, I made it, I exposed it on 8x10 HP5. So I made prints and they were all in my show. Sorry if I seem a little spaced out, but just trying to remember what else I did in here. I think that's about it for in there. For in here, I should say. I think so. Yeah, I believe I took a photo of here on 35 million if not. I think these stairs used to be blue. Oh, cool. <laughs> so now nah, it's the I know, Cody. Cody, arigato. Good boy. Let me refresh. <laughs> arigato, thank you. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to say goodbye to Munda until next time. Goodbye, Munda. Arigato. Mata ikitai. Moikai. Arigato. Thank you. Hi. I almost forgot about this little underpass. Oh, it's open. You can't get in there though. Ooh, look at that. So the first day that I entered the mine, I actually came in here. This fence was up, but it was open on the bottom. So I could call, crawl through and I went all the way in and I got a, a photograph with uh, the 8x10. And I made a print of it and it's been in shows whenever I exhibit about the coal mines. Cool. It's not safe, so I'm not going to go in. They don't want me to go in there. It's blocked off. They've got supports up, just in case. But I'm glad. I can't believe I almost forgot about that. That's like one of the first photographs that I took here. Okay, it's time to head back. I'm going to give myself a wipe first. Whew, it's hot. Hot and humid.